we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 19 of Urgency of Change. This and next week's episodes feature Krishnamurti in conversation with Jacob Needleman. The subject of this week's discussion is the role of the teacher. Upcoming episodes include conversations with Pupul Jayaka, Eric Robson and Frank Waters. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust in the UK. We are a non-profit charity and rely on your support. If you enjoy our podcast, please let your friends know about it and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about our activities and programs, such as the Krishnamurti Retreat Centre, please visit our website at kfoundation.org. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Jacob Needleman is Professor of Philosophy at San Francisco State University and former director of the Centre for the Study of New Religions at Berkeley. He is the author of many books, including The Wisdom of Love, Time and the Soul, Why Can't We Be Good, and Necessary Wisdom. He popularised the term New Religious Movements and was honoured by the New York Open Centre in 2006. This first conversation with Krishnamurti was recorded in Malibu, California, in 1971. It forms the opening chapter of the classic book, The Awakening of Intelligence. Subjects discussed include the spiritual revolution among young people, hope of a new flowering for civilization, and whether one can go into oneself at tremendous depths and find out everything without asking for help. If there were no books or gurus, what would we do? Is effort needed to reach God, enlightenment, truth? The observer comes into being in wanting to change what is. The state of not knowing is intelligence. Well, I'll repeat the first question that I wanted to put to you. Um, There is much talk of a spiritual revolution among our young people, particularly here in California. Do you see in this uh, very mixed phenomenon any hope of a new flowering for modern civilization, a new possibility of growth? For a new possibility of a growth, don't you think, sir, that one has to be rather serious and not merely jumping from one spectacular amusement for another, or if one is not creative in the sense that one has looked at all the religions of the world and seen their organized futility, And out of that perception, they themselves see something real and clear. Perhaps then there could be something new in California or in the world. But I, as far as I have seen, I'm afraid there isn't very much, or rather there is not a quality of seriousness in all this. I may be mistaken because I see only these so-called young people in the distance among the audience, and I see them occasionally here, 
and by their questions, by their laughter, by their applause, it doesn't strike me as being very serious, mature, with great intent. And I may be mistaken. I, I see what, uh, understand what you're saying. Um, my question only is, um, we can't, perhaps we can't very well expect young people to be serious. I, that's why I don't think it is applicable to the young people. Yes. You see, that I don't know why one has made such an extraordinary thing out of young people. Why you see that it has become such an important thing. They'll be, in a few years, old people again in their <laughs> turn. And where are they at the end of it? Well, it seems that uh, it seems as a as a surface phenomenon that, uh, aside from what is underneath it all, that this interest in the religious or in in, in transcendent experiences or whatever one wants to call it seems to be a, a, a on the surface a kind of seed ground from which uh, certain unusual people, certain um, masters perhaps, or uh, aside from all the phoniness and all the uh, uh, deceivers who come But I'm not this. sure, sir, that the phoniness and the exploiters are not covering up all this. Hmm. All the Krishna, what is it? Krishna Hare Krishna business, yeah. Krishna consciousness, and transcendental meditation, and all this nonsense that's going on. They're caught in all that. It's a form of exhibitionism, it's a form of um, amusement and entertainment. I don't quite see. For, a, for something new to take place, there must be a nucleus of really devoted, uh, grave, serious people, mm -hmm. I mean, who go through the very end of it, after going through all the things, they say, well, here is something I'm going to pursue. So a serious person would be someone who has had to have become uh, uh, disillusioned with everything else in life. I, I wouldn't call disillusionment a form of seriousness. But a precondition for it? You no, I wouldn't no. call it disillusionment at all. That leads to despair and cynicism. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the examination of all the things that are so called religious, so called spiritual. You but know, what? to examine, to find out what is truth in all this, if but there is any truth. Mm -hmm. or, dis or discard the whole thing That's and start anew. Now go through all the trappings and all the mess of it. Well, that's, I think this is what I tried to say, but that's much better said, is that people who have tried something and it has failed for them... Well, those are the people that... But, I mean, I think one has to discard all this. All the promises, all the um, experiences, all the mystical... Uh, assertions. No, I think one has to start as though one knew absolutely nothing. That's very hard, isn't it? And therefore, I am. No, sir, I don't think that's hard. I think it is hard only for those people who have filled with other people's knowledge. And that, isn't that most of us? I, I, I was uh, speaking to my class uh, yesterday at San Francisco State, and I said, I'm going to go interview Krishnamurti, and I, what question would you like me to ask him? And they had many questions, but the one that touched me most was one young man said, I've read his books over and over again, and I can't do what he says. Yeah. And uh, there was something so clear about she, that that, so, that rang a bell. Uh, seems to be a very, you know, in a certain subtle sense, a very difficult thing to begin in this way, to be a beginner, fresh. I don't think, sir, we question enough, you know what I mean? Yes. We accept, we are gullible, we are greedy for new experiences. And so 
anybody with a beard or no beard, with a promise and with a, saying, I, you'll have marvelous experience if you do these things, uh, people swallow it. I think one has to say, I know nothing. Hmm? And obviously, I can't rely on others, and I'm going to find out. If there wasn't, were no books, no gurus, what would one do? But one is so easily deceived by. Now, therefore, you are deceived when you want something. Yes, I, I understand that. But you say, look, I'm going to find out. I'm going, I'm going to inquire, step by step. I won't, don't want to deceive myself. Deception arises when, when I want or I'm greedy. When I say, well, all my experiences are shallow. I want something mysterious. Then I'm caught. To me, you're speaking about a, a state, an attitude, an approach which is itself very far along in understanding for a man. To me, uh, I, I feel very far from that myself, and I know my students are. And so they feel, rightly or wrongly, a need for help. They probably misunderstand what help is, but is there such a thing as help? Or would you say, why do you ask for help? Because you, sm let me put it in a, in a stupid way, you sort of smell yourself deceiving yourself, but you don't know exactly what's But, sir, it's fairly simple. I mean, I don't want to deceive myself, right? So I find out what is the... Mm -hmm movement that this brings reception. What is the thing that brings reception? Obviously, when I am greedy, when I want something, when I am dissatisfied, so instead of attacking dissatisfaction, wanting, greed, I want something more. I don't know if I'm... Yes. So, to understand my greed. What am I greedy for? Because I'm fed up with this world? I've had cars, I've had women, I've had money, and therefore I want something more? I think one is greedy. Uh, one desires uh, stimulation to be to be taken out of oneself so that one doesn't see the poverty of oneself. But what I'm trying to ask is that I know you've answered this question many times in your talks, but it, it keeps recurring almost uh, unavoidably that the great traditions of the world, uh, aside from what's become of them, they've become distorted and, and misinterpreted and full of deceptions, but always speak, either directly or indirectly, of help. Uh, and always say the guru is yourself, too, but at the same time there is a help. Sir, you know what that word guru means? No, not exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one who points. That's one meaning. Yes. The other meaning is the one who enlighten, brings enlightenment, lifts your burden. Mm -hmm. And instead of lifting your burden, they impose their burden on you. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Guru also means one who helps you to cross over. And so on, so on, the various meanings. But I. So the moment the Guru says he knows, hmm, then you may be sure he doesn't know.
Because what he knows is something past, obviously. Knowledge is, past, is the past. Hmm? And when he says he knows, he is thinking of some experience which he has had, which he has been able to recognize as something great, hmm? mm-hmm. and that recognition is born out of his previous knowledge, otherwise he couldn't recognize it. Therefore, what his experience is, has its roots in the past. Therefore, it's not real. Well, I, I think that most knowledge is that, that we, we Therefore, have. why do we want any form of ancient or modern tradition in all this? Look, sir, I, I don't read any books. No religious, philosophical, psychological, any of those books. Mm. Mm-hmm. And one can go into oneself tremendous depth and find out everything. And to go into oneself is the problem. How to do it? And not being able to do it, we say, please help me. Yes. And the other fellow says, I'll help you, and pushes you off somewhere else. Well, one the question, it's sort of answers a question which uh, I was reading the other day, a book which spoke about something called satsang. And I mean, I mean more that, I suppose. You know what it means, sir? Association with the wise. No, with no? good people. With good people, ah, so. <laughs> good, being good, you are wise, not wise and being good. <laughs> uh-huh, I understand that. But then, because you are good, you are wise. And there is, there is, I'm not trying to pin this down to something, but uh, I find my students, and I myself, speaking for myself, uh, when we read, when we hear you, we, uh, they, we say, ah, I need no one. I need to be with no one. And there's a tremendous deception in this, I think, too. Because of course, because that's just <laughs> naturally because the, you are being influenced by the speaker. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. So, look, let's be very simple. Suppose if there was no book, hmm? no guru, no teacher, what would you do? Huh? One is in a turmoil, mess, confusion, agony, you know, all the rest of it. What would you do? And nobody to help you. No drugs, no tranquilizers, no organized religions and all the rest of that nonsense. What would you do? I can't imagine what I would do. Mm. Perhaps there would be a moment of urgency there. That just it. We haven't the urgency because we say, well, somebody's going to help me. But most people would be driven insane by that situation. I'm not sure, sir. I'm not sure either. It's just a for an idea. No, I'm not at all sure. Mm-hmm. Because what have we done up to now? The people on whom we have relied, the religions, the churches, the rituals, the education, the philosophy, they have led us to this awful mess. We aren't, we aren't free of sorrow, we aren't free of our beastliness and our ugliness, our vanities. Well. Can one say that all of them have? I mean, there are differences. There is a there for every uh, for every thousand deceivers, there is a one Buddha or. Million. But that's not my concern, sir. No. 
we, I mean, then if we say, well, <laughs> that leads to such deception. I can't understand what you are saying, but I want to help those who, etc., etc. No, no. Well, let me then ask you this. We know that without hard work the body may get ill, and this hard work is what we call effort. Is there another hard work which is necessary for what we might call the spirit? You speak against effort, but don't the growth and well-being of all sides of man demand something like hard work of one sort? I wonder, sir, what you mean by hard work? The Physical hard work. Hmm? This is what we usually think of, it, physical hard, work. Physical work. Going against desires, going and against... You see, there we are. Our conditioning, our culture is built around this, going against, erecting a wall of resistance. So when we say hard work, what do we mean? Laziness? Why have I to make effort about anything? Do so this is quite hmm? why? Because I wish for something. No, why is this cult for effort? Why is why have I to make effort to reach God, enlightenment, truth, what? Why? Many possible answers, but I, I can't answer for myself here. It may be just there, only I don't know how to look. But then there must be an obstacle. Wait. No? How to look? Yes. It may be just round the, cor- around the corner, either under the flower, or in the, if, it may be anywhere. So I, first I have to learn to look. Not make effort to look. I must find out what it means to look. No? You, yes, but don't you admit that there may be a, a resistance to that looking? Something then that gets in the way. Then don't bother to look. If somebody comes along, and says, I don't want to look, how are you going to force them to look? No, I, 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 it's, I'm speaking about myself now. I want to look. I know. So, if you want to look, what do you mean by looking? You must find out what it means to look before you make an effort to look. Right, sir? That would be, to me, an effort. No, no. Now, to find out, to put, to do it in that delicate, subtle way, I, I wish to, to look, but I don't wish to find out what it means to look. I agree with you. This is much more the, made, the basic thing. Hmm. But this wish to do it quickly, to get it all done, this like is, is this not resistance? Quick medicine to get over the yeah. messages. Is this something in me that I have to, to study that is a, that resists this? subtle, much more delicate thing you're speaking about. Is this not work, what you're saying? To, isn't it work to, to ask the question so quietly, so, so subtly, that one comes much more... Uh, I, I had how to say it? It seems to me it's work to not listen to that part that wants to do it. Quickly. quickly. Yes. This I think for us, particularly in the West, for maybe all men, this I'm is I'm afraid it's all over the world to say. Tell me quickly how to get there. <laughs> and yet you say it is in a moment. It is, obviously. Yes, 
I understand. So, what is effort to get out of bed in the morning when you don't want to get up? Yes. Is an effort. Mm -hmm. What brings on that laziness? Lack of sleep, mm. overeating, overindulging, mm -hmm. all the rest of it, and the next morning you say, Oh my Lord, what a bore, I have to get up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now it means a part of it. Mm -hmm. What is laziness? Is it the physical laziness? Or thought itself is lazy. That I don't understand. I need another word. Thought is lazy. I find that thought is is always the same. No, no sir. Just a minute. Let's find out. Mm -hmm. I'm lazy. I don't want to get up, and so I force myself to get up. Yes. In that is so called effort. Yes. I want that and I shouldn't have it, I resist it. And the resistance is effort. Yes. I get angry and I mustn't be angry. Resistance, effort. Mm -hmm. And so on and on I and see. on. Yeah. What has made me lazy? The thought that I ought to be getting up. That's all. All right. Yes. <laughs> all right. So, I really I have to go into this whole question of thought, not make the body lazy, make the body force the body out of bed, because the body has its own intelligence. It knows when it is tired, it should rest. This morning. I generally do <laughs> and two, nearly two hours of yoga every day. Mm. This morning I was tired and I prepared everything, you know, the mat and everything to do exercises. And the body said, No, sorry. And I said, All right, I went to bed. That's not laziness. The body said, Leave me alone. Because you talked yesterday, you had so many people yesterday, you walked yesterday, you are tired. Thought then says, you must get up and do the exercise because it's good for you, um, you have done it every day, it's become a habit, don't relax, it will get lazy, keep at it. Right? Which is, thought is making me lazy, not the body is making me lazy. I don't know if. I understand that. I think that. Uh So there is an effort against, well not against, but an effort with regard to thought. No, not effort. I have seen now what, why, why is thought so mechanical? Right, sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. And is all thought mechanical? Yes, all right. One puts that question. Yeah. Uh, isn't it? I can't say that I have verified that, but. No, you can't say that's fairly simple to verify. Isn't all thought mechanical? The non mechanical state is the absence of thought, not the neglect of thought, the absence of it. How can I find that out, what you say? How can I find that out? We can do it out? now, sir. It's simple enough. <laughs> we can do it now, if you wish. It is very clear. Thought is mechanical. Yes. Yeah. Right. right? Let's assume that. And, and not assume. No, Don't no, assume no. anything. All right. All right. Thought I'm is listening. mechanical. Yes. All right. Isn't it? Because it's repetitive, conforming. Comparing, 
That part I've seen, the comparing. Is comparing, good. conforming. But not, um, not I, my experience is not all thought is the same quality. There are qualities of thought. Are there? In my experience there is. Let's find out, sir. What is thought then? Thinking. There seems to be thought that is very shallow, very repetitive, very mechanical, kind of has a certain taste to it. There seems to be other kind of thought which is connected more with my body, with my whole self, that uh, resonates from another, another, another way. That is what, sir? Thought. Thought is memory, hmm? response of memory. Then, all right. I, this is the definition that... No, no, I can see it in myself. Huh? Some I have to go to that house hmm? mm -hmm. this evening, or not, I'm just saying I have to mm -hmm. go to that house. The memory, the distance, the design, hmm? mm -hmm. all that is memory, isn't it? Yes, that's memory. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And memory is, I have been there before. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the, the memory is well established, and from that there is either instant thought or thought which takes little time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I am asking myself, is all thought similar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mechanical, yes. Yes, it's all possible. or is there thought which is non-mechanical, mm -hmm. which is non-verbal? Yes, that's right. That's why. Is is there a thought if there is no word? There's understanding. Oh, wait, wait. The, the, if there is under, how does this understanding take place? Hmm. Does it happen when thought is functioning rapidly, or when thought is quiet? When thought is quiet. Therefore, thought, it has nothing, understanding is nothing to do with thought. You may reason, which is the process of thinking, logic, and reason, till you say, I don't understand. It, hmm? Then you become silent and thought. Then, then you say, oh, I see it. I understand it. That understanding is not the result of thought. No. I'm afraid I have to rely on another card. <clears throat> you speak of uh, an energy which seems to be uncaused. There's, we have in our experience, we experience the energy of cause and effect, which shapes our lives. But what is this other energy's relationship to, to the energy we're familiar with? What is energy? What is energy? Right, sir? Yes. <laughs> First of all, is energy divisible? I don't know. I don't know the. But, but yes, go on. Right. I can. It can be divided. It's more. Hmm? Physical energy. Yes. Uh, energy of anger. Mm -hmm. And so on. Cosmic energy and human energy. It can all be divided. But it's all one energy, isn't it? Logically, I say yes. <laughs> no, I don't understand energy. I understand there. Uh, I experience something which I call energy sometimes. No. So why do we divide energy at all? That's what I want ah. to get at first, ah. and then we can come to it differently. Sexual energy, physical energy, 
mental energy, mm-hmm. uh, psychological energy, cosmic energy, mm-hmm. the businessman who goes to the office with his energy, yeah. the scientist with his, and so on and so on. Yes, Why yes. do we divide it? Why do we divide life as the business life, scientific life, you follow yes. mm-hmm. professor life and the wife the life of the house wife and so why do we divide it at all? What is the reason for this division? There seem to be many parts of myself, of oneself, which have are separate. And we divide life, it seems to me, why? because of that. No, sir. No. Why, do, why do we divide this? We have divided the world, communist, socialist, hmm? yeah. uh, imperialist, um, and we have divided the Catholic, Protestant, Hindu, Buddhist, hmm? mm-hmm. and we have divided um, nationalities, linguistic differences. The whole thing is fragmentation. Why? Why has the mind fragmented this whole of life? I don't know the answer. I see the ocean and I see a tree. There is a division. No, 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 no. There is a division. There is a difference between the sea and the tree. I hope so. <laughs> but that's not a division. No, not at all. Hmm? It's a difference, not a There's division. There's a difference. Yeah. All right. But why we are asking why the division exists, not only outwardly but in us? Yes. It's in us that is the most interesting question. Because it is in us, we extend it outwardly. Yes. Now, why is there this division in me, me, and not the me? You follow, sir? Yes. The higher and the lower. Mm-hmm. The Hindus have done it very cleverly as higher Atman and you know, all that business, and the lower self. Why this division? Maybe it was done to, at least in the beginning, to help men question themselves, to make them question whether they really know what they think they know. Through division they will find out? Maybe. Maybe just the, the idea that there is something I don't understand. No, sir. Just a minute, sir. In me there is a division, right? Yes. In, in a human being there is a division. Why? What is the raison d'etre, or what is the... Mm-hmm. Structure of distribution. I see there is a thinker and thought. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't see that. I, 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 it's there is a thinker who says, I must control that anger. I must not think that. Mm-hmm. Or I must think that. Yes, right. So there is a thinker who says, I must or I must not. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. That is the division. This is, I should be and I should not be. Sorry. So if I, if I can understand why this division in me exists, and perhaps I know what... Look at that, sir. Look, look. look. Marvelous, isn't it? It's beautiful. Now, wait a minute, sir. Do you look at it with a division? No. No. Why? There wasn't the need to do anything with it. That's all. 
You can't do anything about it. <laughs> Here I think I can do something. Yes. So I want to change what is. I don't say what is. I say what is. You follow? I don't. Yes. I don't. I can't change what is there. But I think I can change what is in me. Yes. And not knowing how to change it, I become lost, despair. Yes. I say I can't change, and therefore I have no energy to change. Yes. That's what one says, I think. Yeah. So. First, before I change what is, I must know who is the changer. Who is it that changes? <laughs> now there are moments when one one knows th that uh, for a moment, and those moments are lost. There are moments when one knows who who sees what is in oneself. No, sir. Just wait, sir. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Sorry. Just to see what is is enough. Not to change it. I agree. I say I agree with that. Wait, Sorry just me, sir. Just me. Just me. Just <laughs> to see what is. Hmm? I can see what is only when the observer is not. When you looked at that, the observer was not. I agree. Yes. Only the observer came into being when you want to change what is. Because you say, what is I don't like? It must be changed. So there is instantly a duality. Can, can the mind observe what is without the observer? Which took place when you looked at those hills with that light on? I don't know. Yes, I know. This truth is, is it's absolute truth. One cannot, the moment one experiences it, one says yes, but. It is also experience that one forgets this. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> but one, by that I mean one continually tries to change. Forget it. And pick it up again. But in this, in this discussion, whatever you intend, there is help coming from this discussion. And it would not, I know, as much as I know anything, that it could not happen, or it, I know fairly well, not sure, that it could not happen without the help that is here in between us. I could look at that and have maybe this non-judging, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't be important to me. And I wouldn't know that that's the way I must look for for salvation, if you want, or for help, unless there was this. And this, I think, is, is a question one always wants to bring. Is maybe this is the mind, again, wanting to grab and hold on to something. I grant you that. But nevertheless, it's the, it seems the human condition that... Sure, sure. Just wait. Yeah. Huh? You looked at that. You couldn't change that. You just looked. And you looked inwardly, and, you, and the battle began. For a moment you looked without that battle, without that strife, effort, all the rest of it. Hmm? Then <coughs> you, remem <coughs> you remember that yeah. beauty of that minute, of that second, and you want to capture that beauty again. Yes, this is... Wait, wait proceed. So what happens? Which sets up another conflict. Thing you had and you like to have it again, and you don't know how to get it again. You know if you think about it, it's not that, so you battle. Now I, I must control, I must control, right? 
Whereas if you say, oh, it's over, finished, that moment of beauty is over. Yes. I have to learn that. No, no. No, I have to learn, don't I? No, I'm sorry. What is that to learn? I have to learn the futility of this no. conflict. No, what is that to learn? You yourself see that the moment of beauty becomes a memory, hmm? then the memory says, was so beautiful, I must have it again. You are not concerned with beauty, you are concerned with the pursuit of pleasure. Yes. Hmm? Mm-hmm. So pleasure and beauty don't go together. So if you see that, it's finished. Like a dangerous snake, you see, you finish. You'll never go near it again. My, <laughs> my experience. I mean, perhaps I haven't seen it, so I uh, can't say. That is the question. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe that must be so because one keeps going back again and again. No, no that is the real thing. If I. S- if I see that the beauty of that light, and it's really extraordinarily beautiful, I don't know if you see yeah. it. And you can't do anything, you just see it. Now I want to see with that same quality of attention, you know, myself. There is a moment of perception which is as beautiful as that. Hmm? Right? Yeah. Then what happens? Then I wish for it. Mm-hmm. Then I want to capture it, I want to cultivate it, I want to pursue it. But how to see that? Just to see that is taking place is enough, sir. That's what I forget. Uh, it's not a question of forgetting. Well, that's what I don't understand deeply enough, that, that just the seeing is enough. Sir, so, look, sir, when you see a snake, what takes place? I'm afraid. No, what takes place? Well, the, you run, yeah. you push it away, kill it, do something. Hmm? Why? Because you know it's dangerous. Yes. Either you know the danger of it through tradition, through being told, look, don't go near a snake, hmm? or you have so on and on, the rest of it. So you know, you, you, you are aware of the danger of it. Cliff, better take a cliff, hmm? an abyss. You know the danger of it. But nobody has to tell you. You see directly what would happen. Hmm? Right. Now, if you see directly hmm, that the beauty of that minute of perception cannot be repeated, it's over. So you, the, mind, the thought says, no, boy, it's not over. The memory of it remains. So what are you doing now? You are pursuing the dead memory of it, not the living beauty of it. Hmm? Right? Now, if you see that, the truth of it, you follow, sir, not, yes, yes. not the verbal yes. statement, the truth of it is finished. Then this seeing is much rarer than we think. No, I don't think. Wait, sir, wait. If I see that the beauty of that minute is over, Right? I don't want to pursue it. If I pursue it, it becomes a pleasure. Hmm? Then if I can't get it, I get despair. And then I, if, you know, pain, ple- or all the rest pursue. So I say, all right, finished. Hmm? Then what takes place? I'm afraid, from my experience, what takes place is the monster is born again. It has a thousand lives. No, <laughs> <laughs> no sir. 
When did that beauty take place? In the past. It was the no, when did that beauty of that took place when I saw without trying to change? Yeah. When the mind was completely quiet. Yes. Hmm? Wasn't it? Right, sir? Yes. When you looked at that, your mind was quiet. It didn't say, my, I wish I could change that and copy it, photograph this, that. You just looked. The mind wasn't in operation, or rather, thought wasn't in operation. Here, thought comes immediately into operation. Now, so one has to say, now, can thought be quiet? And exercise thought when necessary, and not exercise when it's not necessary. I don't know. Yes, so that that question appears. That's intensely interesting. That question to me. That is. Do you want to go into? Yes, this? please. So why we why do we worship thought? Why has thought become so extraordinarily important? It seems able to satisfy our desires. That's why. through thought we seem we have the belief that we can satisfy. Now, apart from satisfaction, why has thought in all the cultures? Hmm? Mm-hmm. has become such vital concern with most people. One usually identifies oneself as thought, as one's thoughts. I, if I ask, if I, if I think about myself, I think about what I think, who, what kind of ideas I have, what I believe. Is this what you're, you're Not speaking Not quite, sir. No. no, I want, apart from identification mm-hmm. with me or with not me. What is, why is thought always active? Ah, I see. Thought is always operating in knowledge, isn't it? Yes. Hmm? Right? If there was no knowledge, the thought would not be. Right? Yes. Thought is always operating in the field of the known. Mechanical, non-verbal, hmm? and so on. It is always working in the past, right? Mm-hmm. So my life is the past, because yes. hmm? it's based on past knowledge, past experience, past memories, uh, pleasure, pain, fear, and not fear, and so on. It's all the past. Hmm? Now, and the future I project from the past. Thought projects from the past. So I'm fluctuate. Thought is fluctuating <laughs> between the past and the future hmm? all the time. I should do this. I should not do this. I should have behaved this. You. Why is it doing all this? Habit. All right. So go on. So push. This is Let's the, find out. This habit. Is habit. And it brings what I call pleasure. It brings. Yeah, habit. Pleasure. Seems to protect, pain. Protect me. Pain. pain. Yes. Pain. The whole that is the whole, always the whole working. Of my life is. Yeah, that always working within that field. Why? It doesn't know any better. No. 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 Why is thought? Why? Can thought work in any other field? 
That sort of thought, no, I don't. Uh, no, not any thought. I didn't say that so- can thought work in any other field except in the field of the known. No. Hmm? No. Obviously, of course, I can't. I can't work in something I don't know. You can only work in this. Now, why does it work in this? It's simple. There it is. Why? That's the only thing I know. Yes. There, in that, there is security. There is protection, there is safety, there is, um, you know, yes. that's all I know. So thought can only function in the field of the known. Hmm? Mm-hmm. And when it gets tired of that, as it does, then it seeks something outside. Yes. Then it, what it seeks is still the known. Yes. It's gods, it's, it's mm, visions, it's, you follow, sir? Yes. It's spiritual states are all still out of the past known into the future known. Yes. So thought always works in this. Yes. Hmm? I see. And thought, therefore, is always working in a prison. Yes, I see. It can call it freedom, it can call it beauty, it can call it what it likes, but it's always within that limitation of the barbed wire fence. Hmm? Now I want to find out whether thought has any place except in there. Thought has no place when I say I don't know. Why, sir? Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. I really don't know. Right? That's a moment. Wait, sir. I really don't know. Yeah. I only know this. And I really don't know whether thought can function in any field at all except this. I really don't know. Right? Right. When I say I don't know, which doesn't mean I'm expecting to know, when I really see I really don't know, What happens? I climb down the ladder. <laughs> right, sir? Mm-hmm. I become re- the mind becomes completely humble. Yes. Right? Now, that state of not knowing is intelligence. I don't know. Then it can operate on in the field of the known and be free to work somewhere else if it wants to. I don't know. I know exactly.